thought I was a I was I was a mute. But I was letting the tenants know that um, the meeting is being translated. Okay, so, great. So great. um, so yeah. Carolyn, I don't think you have a quorum as yet. Pat is here. Hi, Pat. Hello. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Hi. Good evening. Hello. Ted won't be here tonight, so I don't know who's taking the minutes. Oh, Jane was supposed to take them, so I guess I'm stuck with that. Okay, I see you. I see Pat. Uh, Hugo. One, two, three. I believe that makes the quorum. How many is there? Including yourself, it's one, two, three. And the chair of the board is a part of every committee. That's four. Um, unless you want to wait a few more minutes for Jane. Well, yeah, I can. And Carolyn, okay. I have some folks who will be writing a letter to you who couldn't make it today because of the holidays. All right, no problem. Well, I think a quorum, we have nine members. So I think that in order to have a quorum, what do we need, five? Yes, I uh, do. Mm -hmm. you have, UST has nine members? Yes. I think it's eight. I don't think it's nine. I have Carolyn Thompson, Pat Watler Johnson, Jane Arundel Johnson, Sean Farrow, Derek Johnson, um, Ted Kovaleff, Georgette Morgan Thomas, Hugo Torres Fetsko, and Solomon Profete. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. They don't have a quorum. And the office of theirs is the account. Um, Carolyn, you can call the meeting to attention. You just can't call it to order. Oh, I know. We currently are at 637. I don't know if you want to wait any longer. Oh, okay. Um, Carolyn, you have Right, then I'll call the meeting to order at 6.38 p.m. Good evening, all. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, are you, is uh, Mr. Roden from MTA there? Yes, I'm here. He is. Yes, he is. Thank you. So I'll start off with Mr. Roden. All right, we'll, we'll jump right into it. Um, so so uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you again for inviting me to this meeting. Um, I would like to also thank the, the board as a, as a general matter for, for inviting us to the Senior Issues Committee. I think in February, um, we had a good conversation with those folks, um, with the Omni and, and kind of how the Goose Fair um, operates for them. Um, I'm going to be respectful of everyone's time. I saw as a packed agenda, so I'm going to be very high level. I will share my information for personal questions on the side. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, but I do want to quickly review for me. Um, I'll slow down for our interpreters. I apologize. Um, so as folks may already know, I'm the the MTA's new fair uh, <laughs> system. Uh, uh, one Metro New York. Essentially, you can use Omni now, which is our contactless system um, for your, all the buses, local and express buses and subways. When the system is fully rolled out, um, it will also include commuter rail. So what that means is you can ride the subway, the bus, and also ride the commuter rail with the same system. So that'll be the ultimate goal in the next uh, year or so. Um, it's very exciting, actually, um, especially now with the new Grand Central Terminal open. You can really go from Long Island to Westchester, the Bronx, Harlem, all through that rail system. So that's exciting. Um, I do want to highlight that um, I'm going to put where we, the Omni retail locator is, where you can purchase a physical Omni card, but you don't need a you don't need a physical card to use the system. You can use your contactless debit or credit card or your phone if it's linked into that. So we'll put the links to that as well. Um, 
but also for our reduced fare members. A lot of folks here may be reduced fare customers already. Um, you will automatically receive in the mail later this year a physical Omni card for your reduced fare. So you don't have to switch now. So I think that takes the pressure off of our reduced fare folks. It'll come in the mail like your, your current card, uh, Metro card arrives. Well, that's good to know. Also, let me ask you this with the Omni. Mm -hmm. You answered the most important question. But when is the rollout date? For, for like the end of the Metro card? Yeah, well, for the Omni, really. So Omni is already in, in place. So Omni is just a system. Okay. Um, but to use it, like I said before, you can use an actual physical Omni card that you could put money on or your contactless debit or credit card. And if you have it on your phone, you can use your phone as well. So, so those are the options there. Okay. Um, I also do want to highlight that I received the May 2nd Senior Resource Fair. Uh, we, will, we will be there it's in case folks have more Omni questions and want to like work through it, how to switch over on their phone and things like that. So that'll be more troubleshooting on site. Thank so, you. You took the question right out of my mouth. That was, that was the next thing I was going to ask. No, no. Um, I, I think there's value in that for sure. Um, I was at, I was in the district um, a few weeks ago at a library and, and that was well attended and, and folks definitely had a lot of questions. So I think that's, there's value in that. So we will Thank continue, you. we will continue to be around. Um, and lastly, um, I, I think you may be aware of the 137th Street City College Station we're, with the, the ADA uh, work. Yeah. So that's still in the planning phase, but once the test pits start and, and other work advances to design, we'll obviously come back to you as a board and go over it with you as well. But it's still very early on in that process, but that is coming soon. What, is, what are they doing at 137? Uh, we're making it ADA accessible. So that's exciting um, as we continue to make the system fairer and, and, and easier to access, access for all, all New Yorkers and commuters. Um, and what, I, what I'll do now, I'll put the links in for everything that I mentioned. Um, if there's specific questions, I can go through now or save the time off the, offline for folks. Oh, I have one uh, really big question. Yes, ma'am. Will there be a, what they call the, um, was, was then the Metro bus? Okay. Yes. Is that going to come back? Yeah, I, I can share the schedule. I think they do two days a week in the district. Um, and you can also switch to Omni there or do your refilling as well with the van. So I can share the schedule. Appreciate it because I've never seen one. Okay. That's, not a problem. That's good to know. Barry, can you mute the person? Yeah, please. Okay. Oh, I have other questions for you, but I'll have to contact you about that. Yeah, I put the info in the, in the chat for you and everyone else. That's not a problem. It's regarding the uh, bus with people getting on the bus not paying. I have a big problem with that. I know fair fair evasion is definitely a tough one. Um, we we do want, you know, we we don't want to criminalize folks, but we do want folks to pay their fare, right? And and yeah. and what we do is we've been holding transit talks and throughout the different stations, um, in the city. And what we've had is our partners from HRA come in and talk about fair fares. So if folks who qualify, they can get the half price Metro card. So we're trying to like use that resource for folks who qualify um, because it, it's being under, underutilized and want that to be used. No, I understand. But what I'm saying is that getting on the bus and I pay my fare, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, they have a right not to pay. It's very frustrating. It's upsetting. It's definitely upsetting. Yay. Yeah, so so we 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 are um, discussing internally how to address that. Um, as, as you know, it's it's there's no uh, magic sweet sauce or potion for it, but we are gonna try to be a, a little more involved with that. Okay, thank you so much. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time. Okay, I have a question if I can. Hi, um, this I want to um just let you know, sir, that you probably aware that there is right now a community effort to um. Pat, Pat, it's not interrupting you, but could you please introduce yourself? I'm sorry. My name is Patricia Watler Johnson. I'm a member of CB9 and co-chair of the Uniform Services and Transportation Committee. Pleased to meet you. 
Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, what I wanted to ask you about, or at least uh, make you aware if you weren't aware, there's a community effort that is taking place um, regarding various um, elements of the community, as well as legislators, elected officials, to have an elevator installed at the number one train on 125th Street and Broadway. And I know that right now, while we're glad that there is a, um, a, a, a part of the capital project that is going to be one at 137th Street, I just wanted to at least, if you weren't aware of that, to make you aware of it, because if you haven't, you'll be hearing a lot about it. Um, and we're hoping that we're going to continue to, to um, work with the MTA, with Columbia University and everyone to make sure that this is becomes a future capital project um, that, that can be adapted by the MTA. No, I appreciate that, that, um, that feedback. And I think it's very important to make an equitable system. And I'll definitely walk this back. And, and I, I think it's a conversation ongoing, like you mentioned. But yes. I, I don't have any details um, to share at this time. But as soon as we know something concrete to share, you'll definitely know. Well, I understand because Mr. Will Schwartz from the MTA has been attending our meetings mm -hmm. and he's been aware of what's going on. So I just wanted to let you know that. I also wanted to ask, is there a press release that was created to indicate that the 137th Street station, as well as the other stations that are um, becoming ADA accessible, has there a press release by the MTA that yeah, has been that, issued? Yeah, there was one, but I think it was some time ago at the initial announcement, but I can, I can reshare that as well. That's fine. I'd appreciate that. Yeah, that's no problem. But I mean, I know I've, I've read it, but could you please send it to me? Absolutely. Sure. And then send it to us so we can get it. Thank you so much. You got it. No problem. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. That concludes my portion. Any other questions, I'll be happy to answer. Um, but, but I will also be around for a few more minutes in, in, in the uh, the meeting. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Lyle Blackwood from DOT will not be attending tonight due to some unforeseen business that he has to attend to, so he's not there tonight. Transit District 3 is here. And I, uh, he's in place of Lieutenant uh, Berman. He's yes. at 145 St. Nicholas Avenue. Can you give us some update on that? Say it again? You know, the issues on 145 and St. Nicholas Avenue is a problem. In, in the train stations? Not the train station on the street. Oh, so that would be the 3 0 precinct. No, 145 in St. Nicholas. What I'm talking about is Transit District 3 with the cars, your van, and park. Oh, you, as far as, oh, you're talking about the police vehicles? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Like as far as blocking the bus stops and stuff like that, correct? All right, that we are trying to work on. As, as you know, the parking on 145 and St. Nick is extremely tight for regular cars or for our vehicles. So we've been trying to get, we've been trying to get additional parking for our vehicles, which we're still trying to work on. Nothing has come come about that, but they, there is disciplinary um, matters happening for officers who are parking at these bus stops because we know it's very difficult for people to get on the bus when they park at the bus stops. So that's what we're doing on our end, but we're still trying to see if we could get legal parking for our vehicles as well. Okay. And you know, you have other issues in that area as well because you have the two schools there. Yes, correct. The two, and then there's a new school that's op that opened down the block as well. Yes. And they park all day, which is another problem. And correct. And the school bus is there as well and during dismissal. It's very hectic. It is. And I'm saying, has anybody from your part spoken to the principal there to let them know that they cannot park all day, which is double parking? That's been a big complaint to us. Yes, we've, we've, me, myself, I've spoken to the principals in that school, in the, um, in the charter school upstairs, myself, and we told them that the, the bus stops can't be blocked by the school buses during this missile. Uh, it's it slowed down for a little while, but the bus, they, they go right back because it's easier for them to just grab the kids if they're double parked right there. But I will go up again and speak to them. Um, I'm not here tomorrow. So probably Monday. Oh, no, they're not in on Monday. They're on vacation because of um, Easter. So once school opens back up, I'll go back up there myself and speak to them about that issue with the school buses during dismissal for you. I appreciate it. Thank of course. Javette, how do you pronounce your last name, sir? Kingston. Oh, it's another name in the. In oh, Sheva. Yeah, that's I'm under my sergeant's name of Sheva. Oh, okay. So you're Officer Kingston. Kingston, yes, correct. 
Good evening. My name is Yuka Prince. I'm district manager for Manhattan Community Board 9. How you doing? Hi. I'd like to invite you to my district service cabinet meeting. If you could leave your contact information in the chat. Of course, no problem. I also wanted to alert you that um, I don't know if it's a blessing or what, but you're lucky that our first vice chair, Victor Edwards, isn't in this meeting tonight because you saying that, you know, you, you're you going to try to remove the vehicles from the bus stop will be unacceptable for him because he has witnessed and taken pictures of seniors with difficulty getting on and off the bus being let out in the middle of the street. Understandable, understandable. I, I, I know, I know. So I'm just saying it's like zero tolerance for the board. Right, right. And like I said, the, there's disciplinary um, measures happening to police officers who are leaving these vehicles in the bus stops. Okay, we, and I we, wanted to we, ask if we could, if it's not you, then who? If we could get enforcement out there regularly so that they know they cannot let the kids off there, they cannot stop there. So during the school hours, we right, need right. To put a, a enforcement. You know what I'll do? I'll speak to my um, my commanding officer and see if we can get traffic to come over here at that time. Yes. But it's it's kind of like, are we going to give school bus drivers tickets for, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's why we're trying to speak to the principal and have them deal with it that way instead of us using enforcement to give school buses tickets. I mean, it's kind of like, it's like a gray area, you know? It's tough. Understood, but this right. has been going on for so long. We have I also know, been know. speaking to City College because they have a bus. They have a bus that goes work. there yes. as well. Correct. So yes, we've been yes. trying to work with them. This is like, it's been going on for so long, too. The board has like zero tolerance. So we're, we're just at wit's end. So if you could just share your contact information. Understood, we can, I will. We can have a continued discussion. Yes, definitely. And Thank just to, just to piggyback off of that, um, we actually have moved our traffic officer. We so our precinct has officers who are specifically assigned just to traffic enforcement. We moved one of his tours from five a.m. to one p.m. for the specific reason of addressing school zone enforcement. So he's been actually in an, in an unmarked vehicle at one four five in Saint Nicholas, increasing his enforcement. I don't have the numbers in front of me of how many summonses have been issued. But that's one of the corners that he's been focusing on as far as private vehicles, either double parking there or failure to yield right away. That's really one of the big things that we've been focusing on is, you know, making sure that the kids, the seniors, they have the right of way when they cross the street. And if people are, you know, violating that, that they're issued summonses right away. Well, Thank you so much, Officer Stumer. Always happy to help. Officer Stumer, as you well know, I spoke with you about that at the last meeting. You talked yes, about. yes. Officer Kingston, you might not know, but we've been dealing. Officer Kingston, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. I hear you. I've been dealing with that issue on 145th with the card for years. Right, right, right. And now the problem has further. That's not an issue. But with still more you with the traffic, I hope something can be done because it is a major, major. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, uh, no, Harper's not here. They're on assignment. Officer Stewart, you have a report? Of course. Good more. Good evening, uh, everybody. Caroline, I have a question for Go ahead, um, Edwin. Hi, Officer Kinston. Um, Edwin Torres, I'm a co-chair for the Health and Environmental Committee. We just passed a resolution because we are um, extremely concerned of the pollution that these vehicles create in our community. Um, it is no secret that this community have the highest rate of asthma, the highest rate for cancer. Many of your officers um, that park in that double park um, illegally, that creates a problem for our community because vehicles are idling. And we have videos right there on 145th. We need enforcement around this. This is not just an issue about parking. It is an issue of health. Nitric oxide is released from these vehicles and our lungs are cleaning them, our children's, our elderly's. So we pass a resolution with this. Uh, our district leader can send it with more detail. Um, and we hope we can see a resolution, not only with the parking, but this is also gonna improve the health of our community. Understood, that, that, that definitely makes a lot of sense, yes. Thank you. I, 
Go ahead. Uh, oh. I'm going to um I'm going to forward a lot of all of these concerns to our um integrity control officer, which is our ICO, who's he's like the he's the one who takes care of cops who are double parked or cops who are parking at a bus stop and stuff like that. And I'm going to have him address all of the platoons in roll call to let them know that this cannot continue because I'm, I'm only a police officer just like everyone else. So I, I can't tell them, hey, you can't park there. They won't listen to me. But him as a boss, I'll have him talk to all of the platoons and have them know that this is becoming too big of an issue and it's been going on for too long. So we have to get some kind of change going on here. I appreciate it. And please let um, Lieutenant Bowman know that. Yes, I will definitely let Lieutenant Bowman know. Thank you so much. I just, um, I'm just, hey guys, um, just stepped in for Sumer. So um, pretty much what I was thinking is, is that I also let our officers there. We, we can't leave it alone to, you know, TD, because I know they're not the only ones lingering around 145. And the truth is, is we, you know, because of schools, we're also doing directeds over at the schools because of the issues that many schools are having. So we are directed and instructed to do directeds in front of these schools. So, you know, there's a multitude of things that we can try to, you know, obviously bring up to our superiors. But at the same time, uh, the schools need us to do directives in front. And it does involve us idling in front of the locations to make sure that these kids are getting to and out of school safely, because all we're doing is observing what's going on outside of the school. So it's definitely something that we can bring up, the concerns that you're having, um, Mr. Torres. Um, but again, I just want to let you know that sometimes you're seeing um, some of the RMPs, uh, the police cars in front of the schools. It's because right now we're being instructed to kind of surveillance the schools because of the issues in the city that are going on in schools. Thank you, Officer Mendez. I was going to bring that up. That that is one of the big problems. That the fact that so many problems happening in school space, you all have to be out there. So that you know very clear. Thank you so much. Are you going to give the um, stats? No, my uh, my colleague is. He's coming. You can send them to me. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Once again, um, as everybody knows, the New York City Police Department operates in a 28 day period. And for the 28 day period, murders, we are at one versus zero last year. Rapes. One murder? Yes. I know you're going to send them to me, but I know you're going to bring them up. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, we're at zero versus three last year uh, for rapes. Okay. Robberies, we are at seven versus eight last year. Hold on, Ashuma. Rape no worries. Was, what was rape? Rape was zero versus three last year. Okay, go ahead. Robberies, seven versus eight last year. Go ahead. Felony assaults were 16 versus 25 last year. Okay. Burglaries were at six versus nine last year. Grand larcenies were 24 versus 26 last year. Okay. Grand larceny of autos were seven versus three last year. For a total of 61 of the major crimes this year versus 74 for last year. And, excuse me, just to explain those numbers to everybody, um, these numbers are far better at the same point last year. Um, we're happy with the trends that, of everything going in the, in the downward direction. Um, the, two, the, the one homicide that we had for in the 28 day period, we already have an individual that's identified for it that's currently wanted. Um, our warrants team is doing some operations to hopefully obtain, uh, arrest him, but he has already been identified. It was a roommate versus roommate accident. It was not a random attack. Um, obviously, in this area, we are still we are still being hit with uh, grand larceny of autos. It is still a concern. Um, Riverside Drive has kind of calmed down because that was a, a larger uh, issue, but it's it is something that Manhattan North has seen overall over the last you know a couple months. Um, and just to kind of talk about something that we've been seeing 
particularly among seniors. Um, thankfully, knock on wood, not in the 30th precinct, but in the Manhattan North, 100% has been ATM scams and ATM theft, where seniors, people who aren't really paying much attention, they're going to the ATM, they're using the ATM, somebody will come up behind them and drop a $20 bill, uh, some cash right behind them and be like, excuse me, you dropped some money. This The, the unsuspected person will go pick up the money. And while they're you know bending over to pick up the money, an individual will go to the ATM, take the card out of the machine, or in some, a lot of cases, actually swip, swipe it out with a fake card. So therefore, when the person goes to the machine thinking everything's okay, that other per that the person who stole it is long gone. Um, most credit cards today are tapless feature. So we always, we recommend using that for everything now. It is safe, it's reliable, and frankly, it's easier to use versus trying to swipe it or use the chip. You know, most cards, it, it'll see it, like there are three little arrows on the credit card which basically means it's tapless. And if your card doesn't have the tapless feature, I believe 99% of credit card companies now, you just email them asking for a new card and you can easily get one with a tapless feature. So this doesn't become an issue. Um, I'm going to leave in the group chat a flyer that the MIPD has for you know just ATM safety. Um, obviously I'm gonna send it to Utha and get it to get our people to make sure people know that, you know, this is something that can be prevented and we don't want to take these, these steps and it's, it's, it can be a couple of few steps. And if anyone has issues with figuring out if their card is not, you know, I'll also send a picture of what the tapless feature looks like in the chat. So everyone, everybody knows. And otherwise that that's it from my end. Does anyone have any questions? Any questions for officer Stoma? None I don't have a question. I have a comment. Stuma, we're looking forward to you joining us for the Senior Resource Fair on May 2nd. I'm very excited. My officer told me, um, uh, Mendes told me about it. I'm like, oh, I'm having a good time. Thank you. Officer. And we could talk off the, we could talk offline. There's a few seniors that, that live in your district that we may need to be picked up. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see, we'll see what we can do about that. It's not a problem. Thank you. Officer Stuma. Yes. Um, um, you could stop calling me to let me know about that. Credit card thing, okay? Yes, of course. Any other questions for Officer Stuma? None being said. Is your attorney here from the uh, club, Yuta? Yuta? What did you say, Carolyn? Your attorney there from the Grange? Um, well, let's just ask the audience. Do we have legal representation for the grant? Oh, hold on, I think something happened with the interpretation. Uh... Sorry to interrupt. Ms. Yuta, can you just drop your contact information in the um, chat so I can Absolutely. get it, Absolutely. Thank you so much. Do you need my officer Kingston? You need my info? Yes, I'll take yours as well. Yes, I, I want to actually sit down with you guys. Okay. In person and set up something. Well, me and the chat don't work, so you're going to have to call. <laughs> I got you. Miss Prince, can you give me my information? And you can see Perfect. That works as well. That works as well. Thank well, you. Carolyn, you can leave your information in the chat. Yeah, you know, I don't know that for work with. The okay. Chat. So did oh, so is it representation here from from the Grange? Myself and Keo and Colin Cunningham are here representing the Grange. Our attorney is not present. Uh, Barry was saying that there was some kind of technical difficulty with the interpreter. I so, think it's resolved now, you Okay, okay, thank you. Go ahead. Okay, nice. so, and you know we've gotten several complaints from about the Grange with the noise of the issue um, with them. I'm going to ask uh, Edwin, you want to speak and let them know what some of the issues are, please? I mean, can we let them speak first? I, yeah, see, Carol, I, see, I see that they, they, there's two two licenses. One is a, a new license on the agenda and one is a renewal for the same location. Can we uh, <laughs> clarify that for the record? Yeah. Carol, we can are we start? I'm sorry, and Carolyn, can we start with the renewal? 
Okay, all on the wrong page. Because that is of significant interest to me. Right, all on the wrong page. <coughs> Are you talking about the new Grange? No, the old Grange. Well, the new Grange is a new application. Yes, That's no, nice. I want I want the one that is a renewal at the same address. Hold on, hold on. It's, it's option B in your agenda. Yeah, but I'm looking at the lot. I have the liquor license. Yeah. Hold on. You want the one from 1635? 1635, Barry? Yes. 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 Yeah, that's that's the renewal. Yeah, the renewal. Who's the okay. contact person listed on the second page there? Second page? Yeah, the attorney. I think it says Michael Kelly. Is Michael Mike Kelly on? Michael. Oh no, that's for the new application. I apologize. Yeah, Michael Kelly is our attorney. Yeah, Michael Palunas. His wife. Okay. For the renewal, it says Michael. Pale Paleudis, P A L E U D I S. Yes, Paleudis. Right, yes. That's the attorney. Um, is that attorney or the other person here today? No, you have Anne here. No, they're from the new applicant. They're from New Grange. Right, no. I don't think they're there. Okay, good. For them, at least. Right. Um, I think we should send a strong, Carolyn, I yeah. know I'm only ex officio as chair, but I would like to make a motion that the, that the board, that the board send a very strong letter recommending disapproval for the renewal of that license. And we can list all of the reasons long and sundry that we have, be it the noise complaints, the improper disposal of waste, the illegal electrical work, I'm sure of the wage theft, um, you know. I can, I can supply you with all those documents, Carolyn. Okay. Yeah, but, and the fact that the, that, the, that the restaurant is no longer operating suggests that they should no longer be able to renew the liquor license. The restaurant is no longer operating at all? It's been closed for several months. Three months. Right. I, I agree. Okay. We can sit down. Also, they really... stiffed Con Ed, apparently. But, um... Okay, we can sit, down. Not... We can sit yeah. down and do that. If they're closed, number one, why are they asking for a renewal? That would well, automatically. This is, this is interesting. If they stiff Con Ed, the lights have never been turned off in that establishment. The lights, they've been, they've been on. We have but... um, applied for a new under our new lease, um, we've applied for a new account. And when, when was this? Um, around um, over a month ago. So, so the, light, the, the lights that haven't been off since the establishment was closed. So Conan kind of never turned them off. So is this under the new or the renewal? This is under the new Grange. Yeah, so, okay. so, so after Carolyn, you know, assuming that you write the letter, assuming the committee chooses to vote on a letter of recommending against renewal, um, we can close out the renewal item and I will allow the committee to proceed with the new one and I'll shut up and go back to whatever I was doing. But I just, you know, th this, this question of two licenses pending before us from two different establishments for the same address is unusual. Sorry, can I jump in there? I think this renewal is just a, a tactic by the previous tenant just to delay our process. Well, if it's a tactic and they're closed, then that's a problem. So you can always ask them to wait to go and get it. That's not a problem. But the problem is it's a renewal and they're closed and so it's been yeah. months. That's the problem in itself. We'll get the letter done. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So and, oh, I said the record straight. So, and you and Mr. Kanye are here for the new application. I'm here to represent the new application, yes, Carol. You want to give, give us a rundown? Yeah. So, hi, guys. My name is Anne Keo. Um, I just firstly want to say if I'm talking a little strange, I had my wisdom teeth out yesterday, so I'm a little, um, I'm in a little bit of pain. Um, we are, myself and my business partner, Colm, have came together and signed the lease for the Grange as new tenants. I own a small restaurant in Sunnyside, Queens, a very neighborhood restaurant. Colm is the owner operator of Corner Social in 125th and Malcolm X. Um, he also is a shareholder in Angel of Harlem. We have got together, we've been friends for many years. We're both Irish. We have worked in the hospitality industry in New York for a long time. We've been looking at spaces throughout New York and we fell in love with the neighborhood, the Grange. We spent a lot of time checking out. We went to FOMO a number of times. We went to the Mexican restaurant across the street from the Grange. We've, we've really fell in love with the neighborhood and we'd love to open and operate a restaurant. Um, very, I'm, and my restaurant in Queens is very family orientated. We, you know, very brunch orientated. We, that's what we wanted to do. We um, have got together and we've got some investors. And funny enough, the name The Grange is the street that I grew up in where my parents live. And Colm grew, his high school was The Grange. So The Grange name is something special to both of us. Um, I have some samples of menus that we've been working on. Um, very food book based, but very local neighborhood you know, killer burger, something that'll appeal to everybody. And um, if you want, I can go through some menus or I can email or put them in the chat. That'll be great. Yep. Any other questions for the new applicants? What will be the hours of operation that you guys will be having at this establishment? We plan to open for brunch, say around 11 on Saturday, Sundays. And for now, our liquor license is a midnight liquor license. That liquor license runs from, let's say, from 4 p.m. Your closing hour is 4 a.m., correct? No, our closing hours will be 12 midnight. 12 oh, midnight. That's every night? Yes, that's what our liquor license will allow us. Okay. Um, so you mentioned that, you know, the Corner Social and Angel of Harlem, these are two very lively places, especially for brunch. Um, what type of ambience are you guys looking inside this establishment? Edwin, um, I just want to ask, did you get my text? Um, yes. Okay. I, and any time I'd love for us to connect and, and we want to be your neighbor. We don't want to be a problem. We want to be your neighbor. We want to welcome you. And if you're friends in town, come downstairs, have dinner with us, enjoy our place. Our ambience is a restaurant, somewhere you could bring your a date, your grandmother, your child. Corner Social and Angel of Harlem are a little bit livelier than the Lowry. It's a little place in Sunnyside. I'd love you guys to check it out, the website, the reviews. We're more of a family orientated. We want to pay background music, you know, we're going to have kids menu, high chairs. Um, you know, we, we've been to FOMO a number of times. We've seen her busy, a lot of families around. We want to have that. We see that there's an opening in the neighborhood for that. Great, great that, great that you bring FOMO into the picture. There is a disparity as to how the community gets treated. And I love that you guys, you know, um, have been around the community. I'll invite you to go to FOMO around Colombia and come to FUMO on 139, and you will be able to see the disparity that exists as far as the ambience. But for whatever reason, folks think that the, the, the community here, the folks of color here, that we don't deserve to live in peace. And background noise sounds fantastic. Now, having live DJs, live music is a completely different ambience. Yeah, um, just jump in. One of social and Angel of Harlem does have live DJs, but that's not the concept we're going to have in the Grange. You have our word on that. There will never be a live DJ. Our concept that me and Colm have always been looking at, and we've looked at number of space for friends for a long time, is 
Colm and his wife and his daughter came to the Larry a number of times. It's her favorite restaurant. He wanted to give that vibe, that energy, and that's what we want to create. I would love for any of you guys to come. Dinner is on me. Come and check out the Larry. See what we're about. See the ambience and the vibe that we create. We are a neighborhood restaurant, and that's what we want to do with the Grange. Not only, not only that, um, go ahead, Gwen. On the application, it states if it's live music. If they don't have it on the application for renewal or new application, then that's not what they're going to get. It has um, to be the application. The, the other question that I have is that the previous owner, um, had, you know, the numbers of violations is unbelievable on all front. Um, the speakers, they are attached right below the apartments of those who live on the second floor. And I live on the second floor and we have Romero who lives in the basement. You know, if you look at, I don't know if you guys look at, you know, the floor plans, were you guys able to see the floor plans of the place? No. No. Okay. So um, you have a resident that has a legal apartment beneath you. Um, it's very important to know where, where he, where he recycles. because he's been there for over 30 years. Um, and, you know, we don't want to disturb his peace as it was done before. The other question that the tenants have, and if they, if they want for the Spanish translator, please, you know, have some of them ask their question because I know a lot of what, you know, we all went through. The, the tenant association was born because of the Grange. This tenant association was born because of the Grange. That was how we, you know, uh, were born. Um, you know, somebody's raising the same issues. Uh, we, you know, the anonymous, reach out to me, we can help you out. Um, what is the capacity that you guys are, are looking in this place? Outdoor Andre, seating? We would like to get some outdoor seating. Yes, it would be nice in the summer and the fall, have some nice outdoor seating, have br serve brunch. Um, inside, we think around 40 to 50, and then whatever outside seating. What is, have you checked the CFO to see what is allowed in the building? I think it's... That'll be up to the NYPD, Edwin, to do their inspection. That's a certificate of occupancy. That is not the NYPD. It has to be up. They have to put it up. The certificate of occupancy, it must go up. Yeah. Okay. Have I you guys... 60. I believe it's like 50-something. So you have... I believe it's under 60. You have less than 100. Definitely. So... Carolyn, for the record, the building currently does not have a CFO. Say that again? The building does not have a certificate of occupancy. The building for the grain? According to HPD, yes. Then Ann and uh, Mr. Cunningham would have to look for that. They would have to get it now. So please, you know, Ann and Carmen, can you please share that with the community board? Yeah. So see where you guys are seeing this. Um, well, we're, what we're doing for that is we're kind of just estimating counting seats, the tables and stuff that are there. So we can look at, definitely look into that certificate of occupancy. Because that, that is a safety issue. The other safety issue is that currently there are violations open for electrical um, wiring in the establishment. Um, what is being done about that? Because we're concerned, you know, of a fire. Okay. So the violations are still open for that establishment. We were told there was a violation for the electrical cables going outside to the shed. And as you know, the shed was removed and that, all that electrical equipment was removed. Our deal with the landlord is he has to take care of all the violations as yeah. part as part of our lease. So he's working on it right now. So currently you have a violation inside because there was a heater that was placed in the middle of the restaurant with a 220 uh, volt. It was uh, also a AC that was placed there with a 220 volt. Uh, you have a violation of HPD, a DOB for that for that location. There are several of them that are still open. So um, these are safety violations that have to be taken care of prior to doing any type of business. Um, and I just checked them right now and they're still open. So who owns the building? Alma Realty, they're being sued by the city right now. As between the violations, it's not up to the new, the new tenants. It's up to the landlord between those violations. Those, yes. belong, those belong to him. But prior, 
to open in the establishment for safety yeah. concern, they have to be taken care of prior. They have to be cleaned up before the new tenant can move in. That's the law. So it's not up to Ann or Mr. Cunningham. It's up to the landlord to clear the violation right. before Ann and them can move in. That's the law. So Ann and Mr. Cunningham is working on that to get that done. Once they get it done, please submit it to the board. Um, you can, I will let them do it. They will when, can you share these list of violations with me and I will speak with I, our liaison? I, I, I send them to you guys. And there's a there's a current uh, lawsuit that the New York New York City has in the Supreme Court with Alma Realty about this about this building and the building next to it. Um, so the the outside seating this creates some some noise smoking. How have you guys you know dealt with that? Given that you know we have the tenants here who are concerned about that. You know we're going to have a manager in place at all times. Um, in my restaurant in Sunnyside, we do have outdoor seating. We do, we are close to some neighbors. And, you know, if there's large, you know, any noise or smoking, we ask, definitely ask people to step away, uh, you know, step away from the walkway. Don't be smoking around um, other people, other diners. Um, you know, our staff and manager will be in place. I'll be there. We'll, we'll reach out, you know, we'll make sure that there's a noise level that's respectable and we have to respect our neighbors. Yeah, we're going to put signage up to respect our neighbors and to, you know, hold people responsible. Like we don't want anybody smoking anywhere near anybody's eating as well. It's, I mean, it's, that, yeah, and in, the, in their window, right? You know, you have you know some of, some of the folks that were not able to open their windows in the summer because yeah. of the smoke, and they have childrens in there. You can put up no smoking signs uh, right. within a certain amount of feet of the building if you want, Evan. You know, aside um, from the building, but you can't stop people from smoking. Okay. Um, the, they can move away from the building, which is, you know, polite to do. In, in the outside seating, at what time does that close? Um, 11 p.m. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, I, I I would suggest that this is something we look into. Um, other, other community boards throughout the city, um, they have a strict, you know, 10 o'clock because of the nuisance that that creates. Um, We're willing to work with that, absolutely. That, 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 it's not all over the city because we have the Harlem public. Harlem public does not close at 10 o'clock on the outside seat. All right, and he has, she has three places and they do not close at 10 p.m. All right, I'll look into the law, but I know they don't close at 10 p.m. for our field city. Harlem public and I think Hamilton, they don't close at 10 p.m. So that room does not apply. So, Carolyn, we have Omero who lives in the basement. Omero wakes up at 4 o'clock in the morning, has worked at Columbia for 30 years, never call out sick one day, and has to go to sleep. So this guy walks to Columbia every single day for the past 30 years. So for him to go to sleep at 11 o'clock at night, it is a huge disruption for him. I so I'm glad that Anne, you know, is willing to work with us because, look, when the Grange came in the first time, guess who was our first customer? The first $147 that came from me. They didn't even have a kitchen. They didn't even have gas. And we welcomed them. It turned out to be that you guys will see what was going on. So um, Juana, uh, the other guys from the town association, we have a lot of the folks, you know, um, Juana, ¿tiene algo que decir? And what I understand, but we cannot control all of that. All we can do is ask them to be respectful in their outdoor seating as well as the restaurant. We don't control them. We can tell them what they can. We can only tell them so much of what we would like to do moving forward. What do you want, Barry? Yeah, Carolyn. Um, Go good evening, folks. Uh, Barry, apologies. Sir. I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm multitasking tonight. Um, playing tech support, doing other things, and also uh, here. Um, I, I do want to make sure that we hear from everyone from the Tenants Association who showed up, um, and we specifically got interpretation for this meeting for that purpose. Mm -hmm. But Carolyn, to address your point, um, I sent you and Edwin and Pat um, and the vice chairs um, a form that other community boards use um, 
for their licensee applications because a lot of the questions that Edwin has asked about operate operating hours, live music and sound concerns, outdoor dining, uh, you know, the presence of a manager or an owner and how frequently a designated point of contact for the community board, all of those things are things that other community boards encounter and uh, it pays to have just a set of written agreements and stipulations like we were going to do for 701 West 135th Street five years ago before the street collapsed. Um, you know, we were going to do stipulations with that location as well, not because we thought the operators were bad operators, but because we knew that location had a history of issues both with noise and with security. If you remember, that was Body Lounge in Phuket and you know, that. So it may make sense, given the history of this location, to just get some things understood clearly in writing ahead of time and have a designated point of contact for if anything comes up, it can be communicated quickly and resolved quickly. And just all of these concerns that, Edwin, you were on that email too, mm -hmm. um, all of these concerns that you're raising we should have them written down. We should go over them with the applicants, get answers that are amenable to everyone to be a good neighbor, and then you know proceed with that documentation in hand. And we can discuss the the, the procedures and technicalities of that uh, offline if that's helpful. I don't want to take any more time away from everyone else who came to talk, but I just wanted to, you know, in these situations where there have been problems in the past, this is the tool that we've used. Correct. And Carolyn, I would like to remind everyone that noise is a weapon. It affects health. I can send you the plethora of research that shows the effects that it has on health, blood pressure, and stress. So this is the reason why you know we want to make sure we mitigate this. I is is very pleasing to hear that you know what Anne is saying that this will be a place that will have background music. I hope that it's the same background music that we get to see south of 125th and not what we see north of 125th where folks feel that in this community, for whatever reason, people want to live in a noisier place. And that is not true. This is, you know, you have folks here who just like anyone else would like to live in peace and also enjoy their place and perhaps even be patrons. But well, how can you be patrons of a colonizer and abuser when you are living in this place? Uh, Anne? Yes, Mike? How many tables are you asking for? Um, like inside, probably about 20. Well, inside is fine. You want tables outside. Outside. So, um, we haven't actually that. measured outside, so I'm not 100% sure. There was 20 tables inside. Yes. Any other questions for Anne? Or... The, the folks in Spanish, Oye, Homero, si quiere, yo me recuerdo que tú querías decir algo. Puede hablar, tú, puede hablar en español y la traductora va a traducir. Juana, si quieres puedes quitarte de, de mute y pasar solo mero. Sorry, some of my folks, you know, uh, they have technical difficulties. It's okay. Any other question? Will you be performing any renovations inside the space that could possibly include some noise reduction efforts? We don't believe so. We plan, we just give it some like a fresh, like a paint, you know, clean up a, a lot. Um, Hello, Edwin. Hello. 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 Okay. Que ellos saben que uno vive aquí en el basement, entonces esa bulla, la bulla que produce cuando una gente está tomando y esa fumadera y esa bladera y esa cosa y, y los aparatos que tienen ahí, la la nevera y toda esa cosa, eso molesta, porque uno tiene su apartamento registrado por la ciudad de Nueva York, y yo soy un hombre que trabajo mucho y tengo que levantarme de madrugada, entonces cuando estaba el restaurante ahí, yo siempre iba, iba al trabajo tranochado por eso, por, por la bulla, la, eh, el aparato que tenía ahí haciéndole ruido a uno, y uno hablaba con él y él no, no, no le importaba nada de eso. 
Can you please translate that, the question, so we know what was asked? Yes, we can. Yes. yes. Is he, was he in the translation room, Edwin? Edwin, was he in the uh, translation room you was asking? Edwin? Yeah. Susie, go ahead. You hold off so Susie can speak. Okay. Uh, Go ahead, Susie. We can hear you. Is Susie up? He is. They must be having some technical difficulties. Please bear with us a moment. No problem. Everybody heard that, right? Yes, Barry. Okay, I heard good. it, but I have I don't know what was said. That's why I was asking. We don't for, know what was said. We needed Susie to interpret what the gentleman she just said. she just did. I just did. Hold on. Yeah, we, we didn't hear Susie, it. try. No, I didn't hear anything. Didn't okay, hear um, Susie, do you have the option when you click to go to original audio? Yeah, I heard. I heard you. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. One, of, one of the things, Caroline, that um, the guy from the Grange did, a previous owner, was that right on Omero's window, he put a generator. During the summer, that makes Omero's apartment extremely hot. There's some fumes that these generators, when you read, if you read the manual, the instruction manual, it says that uh, you cannot places where humans habitate. And if you look at any building in New York City that have these type of you know, um, uh, equipment, they never put them next to where people are living. Um, this guy was extremely callous. I don't have to tell you anything. Uh, Mr. Conningham was speaking as to him trying to bl even block you guys from coming in and extort you for whatever, right? So that gives you a window as to what, what this, the situation that these folks are speaking to. Um, and, you know, the equipment is still there. Uh, and this is a problem. You know, it is something that, uh, you know, is, you know, that we want to get resolved because it's invading his space. This guy, you know, uh, is able to open his window when this place was not violating him. But now, you know, he can't do that. He can't get any fresh air. The sand, like I said, it's up to the landlord to correct that problem. He has to correct the problem. They're in court with the landlord, Carolyn. They're in court, Carolyn. You know, we are suing him. The city is suing him. There's so many losses. I don't know. Maybe we can do another one, you know, but these are things that when the new owners come in, they will be operating those machines. So Edwin, thank you for bringing this to our attention today. You know, as I keep saying, we want to be your neighbor. Um, when if we can even grab a coffee, you can talk to me and point some stuff right. out. Um, just so we can address this and move forward and try and make sure that there's none of these problems that you had before. We're different operators. Right. We're <laughs> operating <laughs> under new new lease, new you know, new people. We wanna we wanna be good neighbors. I'm sorry to hear about that, and we wanna be able to help you and everybody else in the building. Team, the place the range, you know, we have great neighbors coming down, atmosphere, having a bike, bringing friends. That's what it's all about. Hi, uh, good evening. So I um, so I reside in the building, um, a relatively new tenant here. And so 
I also have some concerns. So there's there seems to be, as I'm hearing the conversation, there's significant pushback on the landlords responsible for this. And, and I think, you know, the community board is a place for folks to share information, right? Because a lot of whatever Edwin is sharing and, and the other folks are sharing seems to me has caught Anne and, and Cole by surprise. Um, and so I'm glad to have had this meeting so that you all are fully aware of what's happening. Um, so regardless of whose responsibility it is, I think it's important that, you know, there's nothing left unsaid so that everybody is aware and and co are aware of what they're getting into, but the tenants also have their, have their rights heard. Another, you know, a concern of mine, and so this is again when the Grange was here previously, and so we don't want to compare you, you know, to, to the Grange, but unfortunately that's our baseline. And so with, with me, for example, having a new child, one of the concerns is that there, you know, the noise level, the, the rowdiness. And so I'm, I'm hoping uh, and I'm hopeful, uh, like Barry said, that there will be, that things will be set in stone or, or will be written out. And so that it'll be amicable on both sides and that there's clarity on the needs um, and, and wants of the tenants. Because as Edwin said, we would patronize the 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 restaurant the you know if if there was a, again a respectful um, situation so I think I'd I'd like to get a sense of how you would handle let's say a noise complaint if a neighbor direct called the, the establishment directly because I've had experiences where I had to call the Grange because I had a six a.m. meeting the next day and asked had to ask them to put the music down several times and none of the times was listened to. And so I just want to get a sense of, you know, to avoid 311, to avoid all of the extra, you know, all of the extra steps. How is that, how has, how have you all worked that out in your previous spaces and so forth? You know, I um, have been very lucky that I've never had that, those calls or any issues. So I'd be blessed with that. But, you know, my phone will always be on. You can take my cell phone, text me, hey, and the noise is out of control tonight you know, then that's when I would step in and there'd be a manager on duty at, at times. You know, we're not going for the rowdy atmosphere. We're not going for like live music. You know, we are going for a restaurant vibe, a great energy, great restaurant vibe. I feel like it'll be the busiest, like hopefully, like Saturday and Sunday brunches will be, be great. But, you know, to address that, my phone will be on and always text me or call me and say hey the noise is out of control and you know if it's a certain bartender's bringing the wrong crowd we'll we'll address it we'll look into it and work with you to get to give you a great place to live that's great and uh youth of prince district manager for community board nine can you leave your contact information in the chat was not uh, without we, a get, we get complaints and i would love for my staff and i to be able to contact you directly no and I, would, I would tell you both that, you know, if you look at the grain initially, their own patrons were giving them bad reviews about the noise. People couldn't go there and have a meeting. Once DEP came around and gave them a violation for noise and they put the noise down, their business went up. This community, do not underestimate it. Don't think that because we're up here that we want to be in a very loud place that we want, that's, that's not true. That is far away from the truth. And we have a lot of businesses that they, you know, you can go to Clove and many of us love to go there because you go there and have a very nice meal and you don't have to worry about it. You got to compete with the noise. So, you know, the perception that folks have historically of neighborhoods of color, we like to have, you know, loud music. That is not true. I'll jump in there, Edwin. I, I'm 43 years old. I don't know how old you are, but one of my pet peeves is going for dinner somewhere and not being able to have a conversation. And that is not what we're looking for. That is, is it completely against the concept? We want people to go in and enjoy themselves, be very family friendly, bring your kids, all the, exactly what I was saying before that. So um, I don't think we're going to have a problem in that regard. I don't think you are, Mr. Cunningham. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Carolyn, um, I believe Barry put in the chat that a follow-up meeting with the Tenants Association and Ann and uh, Mr. Cunningham may be in order. So um, I don't know if you want to set up a follow-up meeting and we could discuss offline and contact them directly. 
we can, but yeah, I'll talk with you more about that tomorrow. It 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 may be helpful to do that as a sit down meeting in the office as well, yeah. if 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 yeah. if I folks agree. can make that. Well, um, we're happy to do that. That'll yeah. be uh, Barry. Oh, you that that'll be fine. Okay, Edwin, we will conduct that with um having your availability uh in account as well so you could be an attendant sounds good okay we look forward to meeting everybody in person okay Likewise. Uh, yes uh, is, are there any other questions okay. um, a pet yes hi we don't have that many board members there. No, we don't have a quorum. So the, the remaining liquor licenses, we can't. I'll, um, I'll, I'll leave. That's what I was going to say. We don't have a quorum. Yeah. No problem. If there are no other questions, none being heard. Uh, I think, are you, are you talking about just this issue or for the Action. No, for the remaining um, liquor licenses that we need to, um, that we would normally vote on, uh, the action items, there's, of course, the New Grange, there's Hamilton Point Granary, Rom Cargio, Picante, and Bono Trattoria Restaurant. Well, I have a question, which is, did you run the slams on those? Yes, I did. Were there any problems for Bono or Picante or the other one? No, none. Okay, let me look at my sheet. Um, I have to be fully packed. There was no issues with Bono, none with Picanti. Apparently, Picanti had a so fine. When you spoke with the three O's? Yes, I spoke with them. Okay. okay. Pat and, and Carolyn, the Hamilton Point Granary, it is the old Grange. Yeah, I know. I know. Because okay. I, I heard Pat that said that you, you still have those pending. Yeah, yeah, no. Going to Pat's uh, slam. But no issue. Go ahead, Pat. Um, let me see. I'm right here. Uh, okay. Well, excluding New Grange and the uh, and the and the and the old Grange, for lack of a better word, Rem Cardio. Um, I, I Dion doing business as Tartina. That's at 1034 Amsterdam Avenue between 110th and 111th Street. There was no disciplinary in history and lamp and no complaints listed in 311. Picante, 3424 Broadway between 134th and one, I'm sorry, 139th and 140th Streets. Um, there was the disciplinary history involved a case uh, in, as of April, 16, 2021, a civil penalty was paid. There was no complaints listed in 311. Uh, Bono Trattoria at 3658 Broadway, the corner of 151st Street. Uh, there was also a disciplinary history from 2017. Uh, civil penalty paid $500. No complaints listed in NYC 311. Thanks, Pat. You're welcome. I spoke with uh, the three of the priests for Bono, Picante. There were no issues. They had no issues with them as well, which they both approved the applicants for renewal of Picante. Uh, new grade the way yeah. that, um, Detective Harper, which also approved uh, the new the new grade. Okay. The old grades is a different problem. Um, Carolyn, if I can just add a little bit of detail on Picante, because I know that civil penalty was more recent. Right. They actually they actually had an issue in auto, or August 2020 where they were not observing COVID protocols and they were fined a significant amount of money. Um, but then the then the spring 2021 issue was in fact an error on the part of the inspector. They claimed that there was not in the required ventilation for the outdoor dining, but in fact, the inspector neglected to look up and see that the top of the outdoor dining structure was in fact open because um, there were fire escapes and other things that would have precluded it from closing. So you had giant holes for airflow there. So um, 
you know, we spoke to the state liquor authority and they, they corrected that issue. Right. So, um, so that's, that, that's the history there. They had a real issue in 2020 and the 2021 issue was a uh, kind of an overzealous and uh, unattentive inspector. And Karen, I have one question for um, both of the owners. When would you expect to open the restaurant? Um, the liquor process it takes around three months. So we're, you know, hopefully July, August. Okay, so hopefully they, they have resolved these uh, electrical violations. Um, we'll, we'll speak to the, the landlord about that too, that we're concerned as well. Yes. Maybe, you know, if we have to address some things, we'll get, make sure we get things looked over. You know, we, we don't want to pump in a whole bunch of money and time and energy for anything to happen to any of us. That's not what we do. It's not the way we operate. Just Google Alma. Barry? Barry, are you still there? Yes, we Carolyn. We will do that letter for the, the, the Grange Renewal. Oh, happily. Thank you. I appreciate it. It makes my day. Aurora? I think the, the question was answered. I was just kind of confused as to why uh, there was two applications. Yeah, well, we resolved that. We resolved that. Already. Okay. Any other questions? None? Yeah. And being said, then I will say good night to all of you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate all the questions and answers. And have a good night, everyone. And you thank you all. Thank you, Youth uh, um, and Barry, for accommodating the tenants and providing the Spanish translation. You're a lot welcome. of times, you know, we the had a, we had a little glitches, but we're it's we're a learning process. But we yeah. were happy to accommodate. Thank you. Yeah, and thank everyone for coming. Thanks for your time, folks. Thank you, guys. We look forward to meeting everybody. And, you and too, Mr. Cunningham. Uh, my office will be in contact with you for that in-person sit down at the district office. No problem. Great. Thanks, Yuta. Thank You're you, welcome. Mr. Peterson, for coming. I appreciate it. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Well, thank um, you. Carolyn, and uh, if, if, if Officer Stumer is still on? He's not. Oh. Um, well, we still need to get the 30, or um, unless you have an update, the 30 Transit Officer, not the, sorry, the 30 Traffic Officer. Yeah. Um, um, spoke on that. Well, he spoke on it for 145th and St. Nicholas. I was wondering if we'd had a chance to connect with them about 134th Street between Broadway and Amsterdam. No, but I'll check. Yeah, because that, as, as you know, we did the walkthrough and that remains a, an issue. And, and I, I am in with, um, uh, Deputy Inspector Corvo regarding that situation. And mm -hmm. he was going to look into it and have the officers go through. I explained to them as well that they go through, but they don't stop. They have to pay attention to the fact the cars are double parked and so on and so on. But I did give them the information. Okay. Um, yeah, I submitted a bunch of 311 complaints for the weekend <laughs> when I was on the block. And at first they closed them without doing anything. And they said that there was no issue observed and I was still on the block. So I took additional pictures and filed them with 311 again. And then I think they uh i think they got the message and actually maybe took some enforcement action but you know that block has been left to do its own thing for so many decades that um it yeah anyway and i'll check with him again regarding uh, the traffic enforcement along that corridor and okay. you you will also speak with the um commanding officer regarding the billiards and bar aka yeah. solanostas yeah, I spoke with him regarding the billets. He said he uh, was, as I said to you earlier, he's going to send undercovers there about the problem that all the issues that I gave him and what I told him. Well, we, we probably shouldn't say that in the middle of the meeting, Carolyn. Yeah, well, that's why I'm not going into it any further. I just gave him the Okay. <laughs> no, I wasn't going any further. Yeah. I just gave him all the information. He said he would answer. Yeah. Okay. Any other statements, questions? No, I just want to try something if I can. Gracias por asistir a nuestra reunión. I am not even going to handle that. 
Okay. Okay. I was trying. What I said was I looked it up. Thank you for attending our meeting. Oh, you did a great job. <laughs> thank you. Oh, that was nice. Thank you, Jair. It's good to see you as mm -hmm. always. And thank you for thank keeping you. us informed what's going on in your building. Yeah, we're not backing down. We're going to oh, keep fighting. Mind. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So good night again. To everybody. Good night, everyone. For all, all of you coming and attending. Appreciate it. Good night, Pat and mm -hmm. Carolyn. I will be sending you copies of the chat. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Good night, good night, everyone. Good night. And to everyone who observes, happy Resurrection Sunday to everyone. And thank you all for joining us this evening. Thank you very thank much. You. So make it the last up. meeting. We would love for you to join us at our general board meetings. You can visit our website at www.cb9m.org. So we would love for you to join us. And happy Passover for all of those observing. Yes, uh, yes, definitely. Pat, call me, please. Okay. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Signing off. Good night.